A good test script is comparable to performing a good crash test on a car. However, there is a right and a wrong way of going about it. This video will show you the correct way to make test assertions in Selenium. Welcome to Automate Now, I'm Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. I recently got a great question from one of our viewers. Jack wants to know where is the best place to make assertions. He mentions that in one scenario, it was easier for him to make assertions at the page object level instead of at the test level. But he's not sure if this is the best approach. Thank you so much, Jack, for asking this question. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using this page at AutomateNow.io, this tables page. You can find this by going to the sandbox page and clicking on this tables button. This will take you to this page. And here I have a couple of tables. This is just a simple table. And this bottom one here is a little bit more advanced. The scenario that Jack has described deals with the table. He's verifying some items on a table. So what I'm going to illustrate is having this table right here, where we have the ranking of countries based on population. So I'm going to write a test that is going to verify the top three countries on this list. I'm going to make sure that the first country that appears is China, followed by India, and then the United States. Let's go to the code. And here I have this test. I've called this test test countries wrong way. So you probably get the hint that this is not the correct way to write this test. However, let's go ahead and take a look at it. The first thing that we're going to do is navigate to that page that contains the table. Then we're creating a new object of the tables page. We're using this object to call these methods right here, verify country in row. This method accepts two parameters, a row and the name of the country that should be on that row. Let's go have a look at this method. I'm going to control click on this. If we look at this method, here are the two parameters that it expects. Then we have the string variable that is going to hold the actual country. In other words, we're going to go to that table and read the country that appears on a given row. And this is the locator that I'm using here. Notice that I'm using this row parameter to locate the country on a given row. This is followed by this assertion right here, assert equals. And we're checking to see if the actual country matches the expected country. Let's go back to the test. And notice that we're calling this method three times. First, we're passing China. So we expect China to be on row one. Then we call it again to make sure that India is on row two. And lastly, making sure that the United States is appearing on row three. If I run this test, I know the test is going to pass. So there's nothing wrong with the code itself. It's the way in which it is being implemented that is wrong. But you may be saying, I don't see anything wrong with this test. Before I tell you why this is wrong, I need to mention that it's important to note that there are different ways to develop a framework. One of the most popular design patterns that is used in Selenium is called page object model. And what I'm about to mention is mainly applicable to this model. Now let's have a look at what the Selenium documentation has to say about this topic. And it says here that page objects should never make verifications or assertions. And it goes on to say that no code related to what is being tested should be within the page object. And as we know, this is our test right here. This is our test class and this is our test. This over here, this tables page, this is our page object. And we have violated that rule by making the assertion within the page object. These assertions need to be made at the test level over here. So that was the wrong way of doing it. Now let's look at the right way of doing it. And I have this other method down here, which I'm going to uncomment. I'm also going to go to my page object and uncomment some other code. So let's walk through this method here and compare it to this other method over here. This one says test countries right way. So this test right here illustrates how we can convert this method over here to follow the page object model properly. Again, this test here is going to the same page, the tables page. Then we have a new object of the tables page. But notice what we're doing here. We have a string called first country. Then we're calling a method from the tables page. That method is this one here, get country in row. And we're passing the row. Let's have a look at this method here. Notice that this method right here returns a string. In the past, we were returning void because this method right here was taking care of the assertion and there was no need to return anything. However, in this case, we're returning a string. So we're going to the table and looking up which country appears on a given row. And we're returning that information back to the test. And this is the proper way of doing it. Because again, our page object does not need to be concerned with what is being tested. It simply needs to return the information that is needed by the test and let the test perform the assertions. So let's go back to the test. And notice that once we get that information from that method, we store it in this variable called first country. Then we perform the assertion. We make sure that the first country matches China. 
we do the same thing for the rest of the countries. Here we have India and the United States. Some of the key benefits to using the page object model are code maintainability, reusability, and readability. Now it's time for the pro tip of the day. I know I just said that we should not make assertions within the page object. However, there are some exceptions to this rule. The Selenium documentation says that it's okay to make assertions at the page object level. These type of assertions can be used to make sure that the page has loaded properly and maybe to make sure that the elements are properly displayed on the screen. So let me take you to the page object here, tables page. And I have this code right here. Let me uncomment this code. And notice that right here, I'm using a constructor to make sure that the heading of the page contains this name right here, tables. And this is the H1 element that I'm referring to, tables right here. Since this is a constructor, it is going to be called anytime that we create a new instance of this class. So if we go back to our test over here, we have created a new instance right here. And it is at that time that we're going to make that assertion. Notice that if I control click on this right here, it's going to take me to the constructor. If you would like to learn more about the page object model, I have one other video that you must watch. Please click the video card on the screen to learn more. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.